Hi, this is Lara at Elliott Wave Stock Market with your daily analysis for the S&P 500 for the trading session dated Tuesday 9th of October. I'm recording this video at 10 to 7 in the evening, New York time, on the 9th. Here's our first wave count, which still has about an even probability with the second. For both of them, their alternates have a lower probability. Our first wave count requires a new all-time high. Our first and second wave counts both expect more upwards movement to the same target in the midterm at 1508. 5 green will reach a quality in length with 3 green. As I said yesterday, we still don't have a clear 5 up on the hourly chart, so we don't have confirmation that this fourth wave correction is indeed over. If our first hourly wave count is invalidated tomorrow with downwards movement, then I expect that the fourth wave correction would be moving further sideways. However, that has a low probability, because with it being over here, it's nicely in proportion to every other correction that we can see on the way up. If it were to continue further sideways, it would probably be a couple of degrees higher, because for green degree, that would be a really time-consuming correction. 4 green can't move into wave 1 green price territory. Movement below 1426.68 would indicate that this alternate would be correct. If that were the case, then the correction would be continuing sideways as a fourth wave at minor degree. 4 blue can't move into wave 1 blue price territory. Movement below 1380.39 could not just be a fourth wave correction and so this movement at that stage would have to be over and we would have to have seen a big trend change. Alternatively, at the monthly chart level we may be seeing a different structure unfold but the midterm target at 1508 is exactly the same. The expectation that this was a fourth wave and most likely over here is also exactly the same. Let's have a look at what happened during Tuesday's session on the hourly chart. This is the low of the fourth wave here and here's the lower edge of that green channel drawn on the daily chart. We have a diagonal unfolding here. We have one, two, three, four downwards so far could be seen as a zigzag. The final fifth wave at the end of it on the five minute chart may or may not be over. It could move a little bit lower to start tomorrow's session. If it does, then 4 can't move beyond the end of 2 for a diagonal. This wave count is invalidated with movement below 1439.01. If this wave count is correct, it's most likely that the fourth wave zigzag is over here, and the fifth wave should begin tomorrow. It should move above 1473 because it should be at least as long as the third wave because the diagonal is expanding the fifth wave should fall short of the 1-3 trend line. For a leading diagonal, the fifth wave may not be truncated, so it must make a new high beyond the end of 3 up here. If, however, we see further downwards movement and it breaches 1439.01, here's a possible explanation on the hourly chart. This one zoomed out to see the start of the fourth wave here, and it sees this movement slightly differently. With an A, B has a truncated C wave, and a C, a first structure in a possible double, labelled W orange, and then we have a 5, 3, 5 upwards for a possible X wave, a zigzag, joining two structures in a double, and now we'd see the second structure of a sideways moving double combination or possibly lower movement for a double zigzag for wave Y orange, the second structure in a double for, for the fourth wave. So we'd be looking probably at a three wave structure downwards because Y is most likely to be a flat correction where A subdivides to a three. So we have a five, three, we need the completion of a five down. At 1429, wave C aqua, would reach 1.618, the length of wave A aqua. After that, we'd be expecting a 3 upwards for a B wave to be at least 90% the length of the A wave. And after that, a 5 down to make a new low beyond the end of the A wave. 
If wave Y orange does turn out to be a flat, then it should just move price sideways in large choppy overlapping movement for another week or so. For green can't move into one green price territory, movement below 1426.68 would invalidate the first chart, the main first wave count, and indicate that sideways and downwards movement would probably be a fourth wave at two degrees higher. For blue, is invalidated with movement below 1380.39. Here is still our alternate wave count for the second chart. It does, it is possible still for the S&P that we've had a big trend change up here. It's extremely unlikely though. It's possible if we have a big leading diagonal unfolding to the downside. This wave count would be invalidated with movement above 1474.51 and it would be confirmed only with movement below 1380.39. While price remains above this confirmation point, we should not have confidence in this wave count. I publish it just to illustrate the possibility. I'm expecting upwards movement tomorrow. We got the downwards movement that we were looking for today. It's moved quite a bit lower than we expected, but price remains above the invalidation point. Because we have a strong overshoot of that channel on the daily chart, I've had a look for an alternate hourly wave count which could explain an invalidation of the main hourly wave count. That's all for me today with your S&P analysis, and I hope that members are having a fabulous day.